Hey, Chris Cavalier here. Welcome back to the Darkest Dungeon. Let's take a look to see who we have coming in on the stagecoach. So we have an occultist. I said that we were looking to get one of them. Let's go ahead and dump our plague doctor here. So we'll dismiss her. This one has become vestigial. Useless. Okay, so we pick up our occultist, which is great. Now we just need a name for our occultist. And I know we could go with the standard the standard name that they give us, but I think we are going to try something a little bit different. So I'm going to run out here, take a look at fantasy names. Let's see here, what would be a good type of name? Well, these are some weird names here weird names I'm telling you there we go Vuck Vogel Vuck Vogel is a totally weird name that we are not going to forget it also helps if I what did I say Vuck Vogel there we go Vuck Vogel has joined the group he is our new occultist that is great. Let's go ahead and take a look to see what we have for options here. So we have a cove, short run. Ooh, we could get an occultist item there. That could be nice. Arbalist, uh, only vengeful greaves. A book of constitution, which give us some blight and disease resist. It's a medium length dungeon. And then a bounty hunter helmet called the camper's helmet, which uh, could be all right. It is a medium length dungeon. Let's go ahead and go for it. Let's go for it. We're going to bring Vuck Vogel along. Let's see here. Who do we want to bring out of our tanky types? Let's go ahead and bring Burbar. Burbar, Vuck Vogel. Let's see. We could bring Cyan along as well. Who else is looking like they are hungry for some action? Let's see. We have two highwaymen. We need to get more variety in the group. Let's go ahead and bring Cuthro. We'll have those two switch around. Probably not a bad way to go, so let's see here. He may potentially be able to level up some of his abilities. Yep, Cuthro definitely is, so we're going to go ahead and do that quickly. We will upgrade that. We'll see if he has any additional abilities here that we want. Nope. Cyan. Oh, Cyan. We could use Dirk Stab. We could pick up Finale. We could pick up the Battle Ballad. Burbar, you have anything we want? Not really. Okay, and who else were we bringing? Oh, yeah. Buck Vogel. Yes, we want our Abyssal Artillery. We want the Weakening Curse, and we want the Vulnerability Hex. So we have just put ourselves in a world of hurt as our cash flow is now pretty low. So we bring those three. We bring Vuck Vogel. Let's make sure we have our correct abilities selected. Looks good there. Good there. So here we're going to switch around a little bit. We're going to go ahead and go with our Dirk Stab. Let's see. Let's go with our Harvest. Let's go with our Slice Off. And we might throw in our Finale ability to start. Not that it would necessarily end up being all that used, per se, but it might be useful. We're going to go with our Abyssal Artillery, which is going to be an AoE attack to the rear ranks. We're going to go with Weakening Curse. We're going to go with Weird Reconstruction, which is our heal that sometimes works, sometimes doesn't, sometimes is amazing, and sometimes it's you're scratching your head. Okay, so we got that figured out. Let's take a look at our trinkets that we could potentially bring along here. So we're going to give him the Highwayman Only Drifters Buckle. We could give him an increased bleed chance, would be helpful. Let's see, the leper here. Plus 15% damage if in the first rank. You know, we might do that and then have those two switch. I think that is a totally reasonable idea. He has no dodge ability, zero. So we could actually give him one of these. Let's give him the, the bleed resist. Let's see, Cyan, you actually have some dodge ability. So I think we will leave you alone. We're going to give you the plus 20% heal chance. And I think 
that is probably... Let's see, we should give him... No. Nope. He's not a plague doc. He's a cultist. So I think we're good there. I think we're going to have these two switch. Let's see, does that change him up a bit? That's right, we don't have the point blank shot. Or the duelist advance. You know, I think we'll go ahead and leave those off. We'll just make do with what we have for this particular run. Firewood and camping. This quest involves camping, and camping requires firewood. Firewood is given automatically to you on appropriate quests. Camping gives heroes a chance to recuperate while in the dungeon. When you are wounded or stressed and wish to camp, right-click on the firewood in your inventory. So that's the first time we've had that option on this particular series. So we're going to go ahead and take enough torches to last us. That should be good. We're going to go ahead and take lots of food because our healing is going to be somewhat suspect with a level zero occultist. We'll go ahead and take two of those. Take three of those. Let's see. So his heal actually does have a chance of causing a bleed, so we might want to go heavy on the bandages. It's probably getting a bit ridiculous, but let's go for it. I think we're good. I think we are good. So we're going into the Weald. The Weald is full of long, winding paths. Plenty of torches are needed. Okay, so hopefully we brought enough. If not, we'll be running around in the dark, doing our stabby stabby at anything that moves, right? I knew all Good job on finding your tri trap, Cyan. So now we are already taking some damage here, so we'll go ahead and pop that. Okay, come on, find something good. Okay, we could use Cress as always. Okay, see if I can pop a torch quick. Oh, there we go. Looks like this dungeon is fairly straightforward. Which I cannot complain about. Nice. A ruby. A thousand gold. Liking it. Oh. Here we go. We have the ectoplasms. We have the stress-inducing acolytes. We need to take these guys out as fast as possible. We can go ahead and start a bleed on two of them. Just reducing the sound a little bit. I had a little difficulty with sound in the last run. Okay, let's go ahead and do this Abyssal Artillery. It's going to hit the back two ranks. Extra damage against Eldritch, which they are not. But, oh, and it misses. And it does kind of have a cool um, look to it. So we're going to go ahead and shoot her and hope to bring her down. That is good. Okay, so we need you to use your hue ability and try to kill both of them, otherwise they may start multiplying. Okay, we'll take the push. The push is not a big deal with this group. They have lots of movement capabilities. Big question. Yep, here we go with the cytokinesis. We're going to make some more friends here. A little bit unfortunate, but we can deal with it, I think. Okay, so you can start doing your dirt stab and hopping forward. Maybe we try getting rid of him. I think that works. So he can actually mark a target to lower their dodge ability. You know, that might be worth it. We can also reduce damage. You know, they're not high damage dealers. Let's go ahead and do that. So she is now marked. Some attacks will do more damage, but she will also lose her dodge ability. Works out pretty good. So let's go ahead and shoot her. And we miss. Burbar. Burbar, what do you got? What do you got? Let's go ahead and do your hue ability. Very nice. Coming through big with your rusty bastard sword. And I think anything we can do here, he doesn't do much damage, but we only need one point. So he'll do his... his weakening curse. And the one damage. Okay, so we have an unlocked strong box, and it's trapped, of course. But he is able to resist the blight. Oh, this map is a little bit bigger than it was looking like. 
But we'll be alright, I think. Okay, we're already eating. We brought plenty of food, and here we have a supply of cheeseburgers. Just throw some herbs on there, and it's like it's not even rotting. Look at that. How wonderful. Okay, so we are getting low on our torchlight. The torch! The light is fading. The current torch level greatly affects many mechanics in the game. The darker it gets, the harder things get, but the better the rewards. Right click on a torch from the inventory to boost the light back up. Okay, so we knew that one, but we just haven't really encountered that particular hint or tip, if you will. Let's keep on hopping along here. Always keeping an eye out for traps on the ground. Picking up a torch, might as well go ahead and use one of the torches right away. Let's see here, what are we going to want to do? We need to explore 90% of the rooms. I'm hoping that we get some type of scouting chance in here. Okay, so we got a combat, our light goes down just as that happens. Okay, I like it when we when he misses us, so our bleeding attacks are probably not going to be so effective in this particular run. Let's see, those two could switch spots. Is that going to be a big deal? Probably not. So let's go ahead in there and start dealing it. Start dishing it. Let's see here. You could use your grape shot, actually. Just kind of hoping it would hit that dog as well. Burbar is the man of steel. He can take quite a bit of damage. Let's see. I could mark this dog, lower its dodge. And he dodges the ability that would lower his dodge. Not quite the way I planned. So we're just left with this damn dog that we can't hit. Cyan is now bleeding after getting bit. Let's see here. You really only have the choice of doing your Dirk Stab. You could open a vein and you can't hit. Let's see here. Burbar, come on. Good job making it happen. Our inventory is filling up. Let's see, let's have you step back. We're doing alright. Okay, so we need to pop a torch here. So now, oh, we did not get a scouting opportunity. You know, we might just go back here just in case. You know, we can do the whole dungeon. Looks like we're eating, but we have 22 food left. Let's pop a torch here. So we're staying above 75. Inventory just is like staying full. Oh. Okay, so we have a combat in the hallway. We have a curio and another combat. Do we want to go do that? I think so. They may have loot that we're looking for. Here we ran into an army of maggots. Disgusting. Okay, wow, that was a wonderful hit. Great job. We might as well do the grape shot here. Okay. So we are dwindling them down little by little. Burbar, good job. They probably tried biting one of your missing digits. And so you were able to avoid any damage at all. Nope. Well, our weakening curse did not quite finish him off. Ooh, but you managed to dodge it. Nice job. How do I say your name again? It is Vuck Vogel. Vuck Vogel. Okay, Burbar. Good job. Clearing out the trash. We'll take that. So we can use the anti-venom on the old tree. Let's see here. We are going to start running out of space here. We have lots of bandages, so I think we just may let this go. It's not that necessary. Pop a torch. Here we have a fight. So the Eldritch push doesn't worry me a whole bunch, although it would have been nice to pick up Duelist Advance with him. Let's see here. You could use your Grape Shot ability to weaken these guys. I think that is a good move. Nice job, Burbar, with the dodge. We're going to go ahead and try to bleed these two. 
You are doing a good job today, Cyan, with that attack. Okay, now the big question is, what do we do with you? It was kind of, you know, like one good option. Let's see, two damage per round. We could do that and try to get lucky with doing a little bit of damage, or we could just try to take this guy out in the back. Wow, tough choice, tough choice. You know, I think we'll go ahead and use the Weakening Curse. It'll reduce her life by a little bit, and then we'll go ahead and clear her out anyway, so I guess we should have went, back, went for her. Every choice can't be the right decision. Let's go ahead and get rid of her dodge. Of course she dodges the anti-dodge ability. Burbar now is starting to get a little bit worried about things. It's not liking how this is going. Killing me. Cutthro with the miss. Okay, finish her off, Burbar. Good job. So we're going to pick up some more deeds. I like it. So now we can go running back. So basically, when you're running back, the biggest thing you have to watch out for is traps. Occasionally, you will run into some random encounters. Let's go ahead and have these two switch. If Burbar was not sporting the trinket that gave him some extra damage when he's in the first rank, I'd probably let one of these two, either the Highwaymen or the Jester, be in the front rank, because they have an ability to actually... They actually have an ability to jump back. See, he has Enlightened, he has Hagelmania. Who has an ability? Okay, Burbar, you have some abilities that are not so great. Let's go ahead and use our holy water on this troubling effigy and see what happens. You are now a warrior of light, plus 10% damage if torch is above 75. That's pretty nice. That will come in useful. We will be using, we'll be in that situation quite a bit. Okay, nice job, Cuthcrow, with the dodge. Acolyte, ooh, Vuck Vogel. He is building up the stress here. It's at 69 now. That is somewhat of concern. Let's see here. Can you just go ahead and focus on her with your single target bleed attack? See, we could go ahead and do our Grape Shot Blast. I think that is a decent choice. Oh, the Abyssal Artillery misses. Bump in the Night cannot hit a Highwayman. Okay, so let's try to clear him out. No, the hue misses. Okay, Vuck Vogel, you need to do something that is effective. Go, let's go for your anti-dodge ability. See, she's going to die pretty soon. Wow, oh, tough choice, tough choice. No, let's go ahead and just try the Abyssal Artillery. Misses again. Vuck Vogel, I should have left you at home, back in town. Oh, here we go with some more stress. He's getting dangerously high. There, Hugh clears out the bone rabble. Let's see here. What do we want to do? So you are going to die, Miss Acolyte. Which means we can focus on you. So that should end this fight. We'll go ahead and try to open up an additional vein on her. To add insult to injury. So one thing that we can do is we can actually go here and repurpose Cyan. See what ability is he not using? He's not using his finale ability. So we could take that out and we could give him the inspiring tune and try to reduce Vuk Vogel's stress. Let's see if Vuk Vogel moves into the third rank. Is that really going to affect his um, ability composition? Probably not. We could actually give him the sacrificial stab to mix it up a little bit. You know, maybe we'll do that over the Weakening Curse. Have a little bit better of a finishing type of move. Okay, we're going to go ahead and... Okay, so we have him surprised. I like that. Let's see here. What is going to be your best move? We might want to just try shooting down the back row. Is that really going to work good? I think so. I think so. So we'll do that. Now, Abyssal Artillery. Or we could do a stab there. 
You know, they have about the same chance. You know, the Stab has a way better crit chance. And... Are they Eldritch? No, they're not Eldritch. It's a tough choice. And you have a better chance of getting a crit, which we need crits to try to reduce your stress. Let's do that. You miss anyways. You can't hit anything, can you? So we're going to reduce your stress, because you're probably going to get more from them. Let's see here. What do you need to do? Maybe we'll have you guard or use your withstand ability. Is that really the best choice, though? I think you need to start working on these guys. You miss. So we're not having much of a, a good start to this fight. You're getting grabbed. We're going to get some pulling action going on. Some stress spreading around. Okay, please don't pull. Oh, not good. So he's in a bad spot. He's going to get chomped on. Okay, so what can you do? You really can't jump around. You could do your grape shot. You know, this could be effective. Opening a vein on one of those guys could be effective. But I think we just want to try focusing, firing her, knock her down, get rid of one of the stress inducers. Okay, this could be ugly. Five damage to Vuck Vogel. He's getting down there. So now we have the choice of either moving him or using his one of his attacks here. I think we're going to go ahead and move him as far back as possible. It's always a good move if you're the healer. You get away from the damage. Let's go ahead and use our hue. Try clearing these boys out. We are going... Wow, this is going to be a tough choice here. Do we want to try reducing stress or do we want to try killing somebody? I think the killing... The whole killing thing kind of works out good, and it'll get you kind of the danger a bit. See, let's focus on her. She's next in line. Good job, Burbar. Way to show them your dance moves. So let's see, we could try to get a bleed on both of them. Oh, that's not quite enough. Let's go ahead and do our... Oh, that was not working out the way I planned. So let's see here. What can you do? 78% chance to hit. 67. I think we're going to do this and get one damage and that'll finish her. But no, she dodges, of course. Vuck Vogel, you're killing me, buddy. You're killing me. Okay, we're clearing them out. Burbar looking good. Our hit points are getting a bit low. Yeah, this isn't going to be pretty. He is now at 98 stress at 100 he will start to have some issues. Okay, so she is now gone. So you can open a vein. That is good. We are running out of inventory space. So the question is, what do we want to get rid of? Because this is money. You know, we could get rid of the medicinal herbs. They are losing some value here, I think. Okay, so you can shift left click on those. We can pick that up. And so what we're going to do is we're actually going to use our firewood to make our camp. I think that is a good choice. We don't do anything else. No, nope, let's do it. We'll get that up. So the benefits of camping. Camping consists of two parts, the meal phase and the skill phase. During the meal phase, you choose how much they eat, which determines recovery, make sure you have enough food. Skill phase allows you to spend rest points on different hero skills used for recuperation. So we're going to have four options here. We can either eat zero, two, four, or eight servings of food. If we eat, if we eat eight food, we're going to gain 25% of our health, and we are going to have a minus 10 to our stress, which is pretty good. If you just have four food, you're just going to heal a little bit, and you heal 10%. If you eat two food, basically it's a wash for everything. If you have zero food, you're going to lose health and you're going to gain stress. We are going to go with the eight food option. As you can see, we do some healing. We relieve some stress. And now we are in the skill phase. So we can actually look at our guys here. And they have three abilities, possibly more. And we can see what they can do. Let's see here. Dark Ritual would be able to heal all of our companions for 10%. It would also reduce our torchlight. 
self only, we can reduce our stress by 25. It only costs one, and we have so many respite point points that we can spend. They typically range from costing one point to five points. So we could use that, reduce our stress by 25, but increase our companion stress by five. Uh, basically, has a kind of a cathartic breakdown where we're all going to die, we're all going to die. Oh, I feel better now that I got that off my chest. Well, everybody else starts to panic a little bit, so we'll do that. We're all going to die. Why should we fret? We'll all be worms soon enough. Okay, that is uh, great. Let's see here. You can actually give someone some stress resist, give them a bonus to their accuracy. One companion, reduce stress by 30. Like it. So now you are now getting into a manageable area for stress. Let's see what you have. Less likely to be surprised. You can clean your guns and buff yourself. That's pretty good too. You could heal somebody. Burbar, what do you have here? You could take some damage. All companions reduce stress by 20 or by 15. It's a 50-50 chance. Do I want to do that? Self only reduce stress by 20 and gain plus 10 accuracy. Let's go ahead and buff him. So he now has a plus 10 accuracy until we camp again, which on this particular map we are not going to be able to camp again. He will clean guns. He's going to gain plus 10 accuracy for ranged, plus 20% damage for ranged, and plus 5 crit for ranged. So that's a good way to go. He likes that. We could give you some stress resist. You can lower someone else's stress. Um, what else do we have here? You could bandage somebody for 20%. You could bandage somebody for 20%. You know, we might just look at healing somebody. Maybe you're at 10, you're at 18. Who do we want to heal? Maybe heal him. He can actually heal himself with a great amount of reliability. So now coming out of our rest, there's a chance we're going to enter into combat. We won't have a torch, and we will be out of order as well. I'm blessed with good health. This place is horrific. We are favored by gods this day, Burbar says. There's nothing for it. Okay, so Vuck Vogel says we're not going to go hungry. So the ancient coffin. What do we want to do with that? I think we just kind of check it out, see what it says. Nothing inside. So now, see we're here, let's go up here and check out this room. We managed to survive so far. We've got some some webbers and spitters. Or as when I used to play Warhammer, I used to call it shitters and spitters. Pretty much the same thing. See, he does not really have a chance to kill unless he gets a crit, so maybe we want to go with another type of attack. Let's go ahead and go with our open vein. Always the crowd favorite. So you can go ahead and apply some bleed to him. That's a great hit. You are getting lots of crits today, Cyan. I'm liking it. Nice Burbar. That's what I like to see. Exactly. Exactly what I was saying. So we are going to run low on torchlight in this run, it looks like. Which is okay. It'll give us an increased chance to pick up stress, an increased chance to do crits, you know, better rewards. But it's probably not going to be that significant. Yeah, we're at 84. Ooh, more cheeseburgers is always good. We do not have... We don't have any more herbs to throw on here. But we can pick it up anyways. Oh, nothing left to offer. That army of maggots must have got after it. Is my only guess. Maybe the fungal scratchers. You know, they kind of have the long, gangly arms and are able to scoop up food as they're walking by. Ooh, I like this. We'll take that torch. Let's see where we're we at. 79. Let's just pick it up for now. Or now, the torch went down a little bit. We're getting hungry again. This room should be empty. Says we are complete. We have done enough for the dungeon. However, we are going to continue as there are some curios. There's a trap down here. Do I have any more holy water? I don't. So I could take a risk and see what this does. 
Let's see here. Who? You know, I think uh, Cuthrow, you go ahead and check it out. Okay, it blighted him. Oh, he resisted the blight. Not a big deal. Not a big deal at all. Okay, let's see what we got here. We have some leftover luggage. It's trapped, of course, and you do pick up a blight. We have some anti-venom for that. We can disarm that trap. You are now stress-free. Very nice. This room looks empty. What else do we got? So we got a curio, a trap, and an empty room. You know, we might as well go check that stuff out. Okay, so this becomes a non-factor. It'll, it'll net us five gold. And then for stress relief, you know, we could have Scion try to disarm this trap. He does, and he is now stress-free. So three stress-frees and a 39, and we're out of here. So we have to be pretty happy with that run. We are going to net over 9,000 gold, which is nice. We pick up six deeds. Actually, we're going to end up picking up ten total. So that is going to be good for upgrading parts of the town that we want. Let's see. We have a couple guys closing in on level two. Let's see. Unyielding, plus 10%. Death Blow Resist. Warrens Explorer. He gets extra scouting in the Warrens. And Meditator. Uh, means he gets some improved stress reduction while meditating. Imagine that. So that was a good run overall. Can't complain. Vuk Vogel was having lots of difficulty. So we do have some things open up here. The survivalist camp is now unlocked and same as the nomad's wagon. Okay, so this is something, since I think we opened up our, our camping feature, you can go here and we can train new camping abilities, as you can see. There's four of them that we don't have, so we'll just say Raw Wolf went here. He could actually pick up uh, something that would... All companions gain plus 20 stress resist, which is pretty decent. He could have a self buff here, plus 10 accuracy, and reduces some stress. Anyways, they're all going to have some unique abilities. Some are going to be similar, like this Encourage is basically something that everybody has access to. We could actually go and start upgrading that, but since money is fairly tight early on, it's not, usually not something I focus on. So the Nomad Wagon is going to have basically trinkets for sale. We can upgrade it so we'll have more trinkets available to us and we can upgrade it so it'll have a reduced cost for the trinkets that are available they are typically a little bit cost prohibitive especially early on so we may not really look in there too much and you can sell trinkets anytime from your trinket screen here let's see here is there anything that I really would don't mind losing I don't know. Say, for instance, I wanted to sell this, you would just shift, hold shift while you're moused over it. And if I click on it, it'll say, Really sell the bleed stone for 750 gold? We'll say no for now, but when you start getting duplicates, or say you get, I don't know, an, an ancient item, um, they can be worth quite a bit. They can sell for like 7,500 gold, and sometimes they're better off selling those than keeping them, especially if they don't really have an ability that really interests you in any way. Go take a look at the stagecoach quickly here. So we can pick up another occultist, we can pick up another leper, but we of course would need to increase our roster size first, which I think we are going to do. So that is going to bump that up. We now have three new open slots. Let's go ahead and pick up this other occultist. Agreed, and let's see here. Do we want to pick up another leper? You know we can. Kleptomaniac and Sickly, and he is a striker. Wow, that striker. Plus three crit with melee skills? That is awesome. Sickly and Kleptomaniac, however, are very annoying. Let's see, what do you got? Dark Temptation, Deviant Taste. He is not allowed to visit the brothel. Brothel. That's probably a good move 
um, since he's a leper. The Dark Temptation basically is going to be similar to a kleptomaniac, except for it's only going to affect him when he finds something that is dark arts oriented. Okay, so he also gets a move resist bonus, and he's going to gain some extra damage and stress resist versus an Eldritch. You know, I kind of like this, uh, this guy here. We might pick him up. Don't know if we're going to end up using him. Exactly. Let's see, we could actually increase our level so we could have Instructor Mastery, which would allow us to receive level 2 upgrades. We could reduce the cost of picking up training skills. Boy, which one is going to be a better move? We could actually pick up both. We could pick up both. What am I going to need to increase our roster size again? 16 of the Cress. Let's see, we only have 18, but we still need to pick up 8 more deeds. Could be a challenge. You know, I think we go ahead and upgrade this. We're going to be buying... Exactly. And then we may even consider picking this up. Do I want to do that? 11. You know, reducing the cost of picking up all these abilities is probably pretty big. So now we have the Wizened Hag has opened up, which is a boss fight. I don't know if we're quite ready for that. Um, we do have a short adventure in the Wield, short in the Cove. A medium. Let's see what kind of item we got here. A plague doctor item. See, so gives them, well, makes them into a melee terror. Plus ten accuracy, plus twenty damage, and extra bleed. You know that uh, actually would make them a little bit more versatile. Crusader item here that gives us a plus five protection, lowers our crit chance. And yeah, we don't like the book of rage, and a grave robber stun. So I'm not exactly sure what we're gonna do. But we can figure that out in the next video. I'd like to thank you all for watching The Darkest Dungeon. I am Chris Cavalier.